Okay, let's make our left turn and fly directly along Shrewsbury Street. Oh wow, look at this, this Wait, is downtown. I'm just flying over downtown. This is crazy. to the Worcester Airport that we're exiting the Delta. Oh, we're right over you, Mats, right? Yeah. I see. Worcester Tower, Warrior 5, Town 364, exiting the Delta over the Lincoln. Warrior 364, for each other's birthday. Change your thanks for help, Warrior 5, Town 364. This is awesome. Okay, we'll make a light right hand turn, go along the lake, and then transition northbound. Does that make sense? Yeah. So today I'm doing an aerial photography flight, and I thought I'd show a little bit about how I prepare for something like this, because I find that it's very important to go ahead and actually know your plan or get a shot list before taking off. And so I use something called Google Earth Studio. It's kind of like Google Earth, but a little bit more flexible for the types of things that we need it for. And I use that to, one, figure out where I'm going to be flying, and two, kind of get a sense of what the final shot might look like, given my time of day and the, the area that I'm going to be flying in as well. So here I am in Google Earth Studio. You can see that I have the main area open and I usually just start with a blank project. And you can, for now, just leave these settings as fine. But um, you know, if you want to do an actual animation, you can kind of customize them. The first thing I like to do is I add an attribute and do time of day. This is really, really useful. And this basically means that the Google Earth Studio here animation is going to be synced with the actual current time of day. And I know that, for example, I'm going to be flying later this afternoon, so October 28th, excuse me, October 18th, and I know it's going to be around 2135 GMT, which is about 535 PM. So let's say 21, uh, let's call it 36 GMT. So we know that that's about the time I'm going to be flying. And so here in Massachusetts, let's see, where is it? we know that's going to be close to sunset. And usually, I know I'm going to be doing a flight around Worcester. I'd like to ideally get a nice shot of downtown um, of the city. And if I can, I'd like to fly down Shrewsbury Street, which is kind of the area with a lot of restaurants and really popular uh, in the evening time, kind of around the time that I'm going. So I'd like to ideally kind of fly directly along that route and then maybe do a few orbits uh, around the city and then maybe get some shots of the lake um, at the border. So let's go ahead and type in Worcester. So here you can see the actual city and um, this is kind of the area that I'm going to be flying at. Here's the airport kind of on the, the western side of the city and I know that at this time of day the sun is coming from the west. It's going to be around sunset. So if you look here you can see kind of that's where the sun is going to be. And I know that on a calm wind day like this, Worcester is going to be using runway 29, which is this long runway right over here, for the most part. And so as a result, I know that I'm not really going to get any good footage of us landing because I'm going to be facing the sun. And so the, the lighting isn't going to be good. It's going to be all blown out highlights. But I know that when I take off on runway 29, I can go ahead and do a left downwind departure. And that would be perfect because I'm going to be facing the city. And I know this is going to be perfect because the airport is kind of the highest point of the city. It's at about 1,000 feet 
uh, in fact, almost exactly 1,000 feet uh, MSL. And I know that over a congested area, I need to be an additional 1,000 feet over that area. So say I sit, fly at 2,000 feet, I know I'm going to be well clear of the, the restrictions above the minimum altitude that I need to be. And so I can kind of take off here, do a left downwind departure here, fly at pattern altitude at about 2,000 feet, and go kind of over downtown. And if you look carefully, you might be able to see Shrewsbury Street, kind of this area right here. So I will want to fly right about this way. And, and this is perfect because you can kind of get a sense of like, okay, the sun is going to be lighting from behind me. And so I'm going to get some good contrast between the bright faces of the building and the dark faces of the building, and perhaps the darker sky in the background too. I think that's going to be a really interesting angle. And I certainly wouldn't want to be flying this way because you're not really going to be able to see much with the glare of the sun. I wouldn't be able to get any good footage that way. So you can definitely get a sense of what is going on. And I know that if I fly this way, kind of do a left downwind departure here, I'm going to go this way and I'll be able to kind of meet Shrewsbury Street over here in this general area, fly kind of directly down this area and then go down. And then I can do a, a turn around this way, go to the south side of this lake here, Lake Quinsigamond, and then I can even fly one straight up uh, the lake northbound back towards my home airport of Fitchburg. And that way I'll get some great shots of this bridge over here, which is really beautiful. Um, and especially at that time, they're gonna have some lights on that bridge. So I think that will be a really great way of figuring out, okay, this is the way I wanna do the flight and this is the route I'm gonna take. So Google Earth Studio is a really effective tool at allowing me to do that. And I can adjust the time. I can say, okay, what time would I want if I wanted to be, uh, for example, be able to see Boston in the distance? So this actually, this works out that this might be a time. Today, you know, the weather is kind of like, we have a high pressure system kind of staying right on top of us, stagnating right on top of us. And so, yeah, about a 50% chance of seeing, you know, whether it's going to be haze or a clear day. It really sort of depends. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm not sure the exact likelihood, but we might be able to see Boston kind of in the distance over in this direction. And we might get some glints of the city. And on camera, I don't think it'll come out really that good, but you know, in real life with your eyes, you can definitely see that um, on a clear day. It's about 50 miles sort of to the east of Worcester, north, northeast, um, or sorry, east, uh, northeast. And so that would be another thing that we can fi kind of find out based on this. And you can also, of course, play around with some of these. You can actually use this as an animation tool. And I think that that's really helpful um, as a way of getting a sense of like, okay, this is the route that we're going to be flying. What what is this footage going to even come out like? So say I make a keyframe over here and I go a little bit further, I can kind of get a sense, okay, if I fly this way, right, make another keyframe, go a little bit further, oops, kind of fly this way. And of course, you know, you could be a little bit more meticulous with the, the keyframing, but let's get a sense of like, okay, this is kind of what it might look like from this, the air. And it really helps just kind of plan out, okay, this is kind of the, the area that I'm gonna be in and this is what the, the footage is gonna look like and get a sense of like, okay, this is, this is exactly where I'm going and you can kind of figure out, okay, this is perfect. What I'd like to do then is actually mark out the waypoints in foreflight. So I will realize, okay, I want to be right at the uh, end of Shrewsbury Street. This is the area that I want to be at after a downwind departure. And so I can mark that location using GPS coordinates um, on foreflight. And I know when I'm in the air, okay, I will see that and I'll be able to, to hit that mark um, when I need to. And I can coordinate with tower saying, you know, this is a, a photo flight. I'd like to go this direction and then turn a little bit northeast to uh, follow the street and then um, come back around and do uh, a flight along the, you know, southbound to south to northbound uh, along the lake. So you can kind of use that to your advantage to figure out this is the place that you're going to be. So that's pretty much my planning process. And you can go really in depth with this or keep it as simple as you want. Um, but I do think Google Earth Studio is a really great way of being able to really play around with 
the time of day, the conditions, and really get a sense of like, okay, this is what the aerial footage might look like, and figure out what types of footage you might want to go for. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.